Sweet. All right. Cool. Um, okay, let's get this started. Okay, so the first thing um, that you're going to need is either click on uh, the workspace here, um, tools. Uh, yeah, so administration, if you click on manage apps or if you just go to um, api.slack.com, that should be equivalent. And then once that loads, you can click on your apps and then just create a new one from here. All right. And then I'm going to call mine uh, test slack bot, whatever. Uh, and then send it to VVS and create. Sweet. Now that we've got our uh, slack bot ready to go, uh, we're going to need at least uh, some things to get started. So the first thing you're going to do is go to the OAuth and Permissions tab because uh, we're going to subscribe to a list of different events that Slack, uh, Slack's going to pipe through. Um, so we're going to at least need one uh, scope. So maybe the, the most common one would be like listening for messages, right? Uh, so we can just add a OAuth scope. Actually, I'm going to turn off my dark mode here. All right. Um, so if you add an OAuth scope here, and then just type in a uh, message uh, wait, uh, channel history, right, channel. Yeah, so channels history is the one you're going to need at least. Uh, so that one is going to take care of view the messages in the public channel. Uh, so make sure that you're inviting your bot to a public channel. So if you're going to invite your bot to a, like a private testing channel, then you're probably going to want uh, groups history. So we're just going to add that as well. Uh, if we ever need to test like in a private channel that we don't want others to, to see. Um, yeah. And then once that is done, we can just click install app to the workspace. And allow. Sweet. All right. Uh, so now we've got our uh, bot token, basically, this is the uh, auth token that we're going to need to authorize our app in, in order to uh, work in our local environment. All right, uh, so now we're going to load up uh, the text editor or the code editor. Uh, and then this is the project that I share. Uh, this is more of a starter template Slack uh, bot project. So you don't really need to care about all this other stuff. So the first thing you're going to need to do is uh, to install all of the dependencies here. Uh, so you can either fire up a console or I think VS Code has that internally. Uh, terminal. Right, uh, I'm gonna need internal terminal. Where is that? All right, but yeah, what's that, tilde? Yeah, I, th I think I have a different uh, key map in here, but yeah. So the, like, the goal is the same. You can either use an external terminal or just use the one that uh, VS Code has to offer built in. Okay, uh, so right now, so you can just do npm install like this, but I prefer another version of npm so it's called yarn but it's the same thing so basically you want to install all of, the, all of the dependencies here and then make sure they are uh, installed correctly under no modules there's like a bunch of different stuff in here so at least if you see uh, no modules directory being populated here then you're ready to go and yeah once that is done uh, so we're going to need to copy let me delete this file right here so if this is a fresh uh, repository that you're uh, first looking at, then this is the folder structure that you're going to see. So we're going to copy the .env.example. Um, so you, you can either make a new file called just .env. So this is the environment variables that we're going to need to store like secret information for our project that we don't want GitHub to see, basically. 
All right, uh, so we're gonna open up the .env.example and then copy everything over. And by the way, uh, you guys can see this clearly, right? Uh, hopefully. Cool. All right. Um, so right now, uh, there are two things that's very essential to our project. So the first one will be the Slack bot token, which is the one that we just created. So you can copy this uh, bunch of gibberish and uh, paste that over. All right, so this is the most important thing they're gonna need. But the second thing is the signing secret. So this thing is like, um, so there are a bunch of different events that's gonna need a signing secret for you to you know, make web calls. So if you wanna add like a reaction or different kind of things that's, that's other than just you know, reply to a message, you're gonna need a signing secret as well. And that is under, I think, basic information. And if you scroll down a little bit, there's a signing secret and then you click show and just copy this whole thing over. All right, so that is done. Uh, yeah, we're ready to go for our project to run. And you can see that uh, I've added two different API based URL. So for this uh, like project simplicity sake, uh, we're just gonna use either like a cat API or dog API if you prefer. Uh, so they are pretty much the same uh, in the format of the API structures and every, uh, everything that's like a image search. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go with the cat API for this tutorial. And yeah, that should be everything to it. And then we save the file. And now what we're gonna need to do is you can either, I'm not sure if this is a uh, package that I installed to uh, VS Code or not, but the same thing would be going to console and then or terminal uh, and then type in npm run dev, or you can use uh, this uh, right here if you have the npm script uh, window pop, pop up. Uh, all right, I'm gonna close this. Sweet. Now you can see that. Uh, my app is running on port 3000. Uh, by the way, is anyone actually following along or just observing? Sweet. Okay. Okay, if anybody is like uh, following along, let me know. I can pause a little bit uh, to make sure the pace is not too fast. Sweet. All right. Um, so now our app is running on localhost uh, 3000 port. We can directly go to uh, that URL, and then you should able to you should be able to see like this cannot get. But basically, this means it's working, even though it doesn't seem like it. But yeah, uh, so our endpoint for the Slack uh, events will be uh, Slack and then slash uh, events, I think. But yeah, that's gonna be a post request, so we cannot actually using the get request here to you know fire events. So this URL or this endpoint will be where Slack is gonna fire events to us, right? But Slack doesn't really know where localhost is because that's relative to your own machine. So what we're gonna need here is the tool called ngrok. Hope I'm uh, pronouncing that correctly, but yeah, this is the uh, like a local tunnel thing that's gonna publish to like a worldwide uh, channel kind of thing. So it's gonna you know make your local host uh, available to everybody in the, in the worldwide world. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let's go to the terminal and then fire that. So we're gonna open another term terminal uh, tab or I'm just gonna use an external one to keep it clean. All right, so I'm just gonna say ngrok HTTP 3000. That's just gonna open up a port uh, or URL for me. So if we visit that URL, that's gonna get a, basically the same thing. Right, so now we've have, uh, we have this URL, so we can tell Slack, hey, if, if there's any events that we care about, I want you to you know send those 
payloads to this URL and that'll be under event subscriptions and all right so now we click the toggle and then it's gonna ask us for the request URL so we're just gonna copy that over and then say slack events and that should hopefully get verified sweet all right um, and right now we're just gonna tell slack what kind of events we're gonna listen to basically so the first one we're gonna need is um, so maybe you want to do so that definitely depends on like how you want to structure your bot or how do you want to design your API's like how you want user to interact with your bot um, so for this tutorial I think I'm just gonna use maybe an app mission is uh, useful and then another one would be just anybody um, that's in the same channel as the bot that's like triggered by a keyword or something and that could be helpful as well so that will be just like reading all of the new messages coming so for that uh, for that to work we're gonna need I think that's called message dot channels yeah so there are two types of channels right so one would be private channel and I'm not sure why slack like name them groups instead of like a private channel and channel kind of thing but yeah, so that's the naming convention that Slack is uh, getting to. So message.channels means you're gonna listen to all of the new messages from public channels that your bot is in. And then message.groups is for private channels. And maybe we're just gonna add both of them. So message.groups. All right. Um, and then there's one other thing that you can do is something that I figured out not long ago <laughs> um, so if you want to subscribe to events on behalf of users what that means is uh, because I'm the one who created this uh, slack bot and I was the one who installed this app to our workspace so um, that means every channel that I've been in I can trigger the events without you know inviting my bot over so that's pretty much like li listening on the behalf of me Right. Uh, so if you don't want that to happen, then you're gonna need. Uh, so you're just gonna only gonna need the bot events. So you don't need the uh, events on behalf of users. All right. So we definitely don't want that privacy thing to you know hit. Uh, so we're just gonna limit everything to be you know in the scope of the bots actually in. All right. So we're just gonna have these three uh, events to listen to. All right, and hit save. All right, and now it's gonna prompt you saying like, hey, you changed the permission uh, your app uses, so please reinstall. So you can either click here or go back to OAuth and reinstall the app. All right, so now you're gonna see new stuff, uh, new scopes popping in, right? Uh, so allow, and this uh, OAuth token doesn't really change, so you can just leave that in place and don't worry about like changing that over to the environment variable. All right, so now we've done everything we need to, I think. So we've, so what we, um, what we've done so far is uh, starting our app on the port of three thousand, and then using ngrok to tell the, uh, you know, the public internet to, you know, uh, to pipe this URL to our local host three thousand port. So this becomes public uh, available. So Slack can pick that up. All right, so now if we go back to Slack and invite our newly created bot, um, what's it called? Slack, test Slack bot. All right, so it's invited, right? Cool. All right, so now that it's invited, we can actually go into our code and start testing with it. All right, so if we go into the source directory, and by the way, I'm using TypeScript, but that's basically the same as JavaScript. Uh, so it's like a JavaScript on steroids kind of thing. You get, you know, type uh, out of the box and, you know, all the goodies uh, like C Sharp and other good languages. <laughs> all right, um, so I've gone ahead and actually done a little bit of 
boiler play thing over here. So you don't need to care about the receiver. Uh, you don't need to care about how we're setting up the app. These are just like straightly copied over from Slack. And then the only thing that we're gonna uh, need to do here is to say, hey, I wanna listen to events, right? That's where, what our goals are. Uh, so we're just gonna say app dot, uh, the event that you're gonna listen to, or just like a shortcut to message event. So you can either do event and then passing in the event name of message, or you can just do message and then say, hey, I want to listen to what message? So you can write a regular ex uh, expression here. So maybe we want to do like a, a cat emoji that probably is something we want to listen to. Uh, and then if that gets caught by this regular ex uh, expression here, then we're gonna, you know, just fire an event over here. And I'm using async because that's like a, a, a promise thing for uh, JavaScript to, you know, run code that's asynchronously handled. So if you don't run async, then you can just say, uh, you know, uh, do something and then do other things. So that's basically why we're writing async code. All right. Uh, so we can take a bunch of things in here. So this is the context that we're going to get through. Um, so we're just going to console log this whole thing out to make sure we're actually getting the events triggered by Slack. So, oh, no, it's done. All right, so what this regular expression just means, you know, listen for this emoji to trigger, right? Uh, so we're gonna save and then it's gonna restart the app, all right? So now we're gonna go into our channel and then basically say cat and then let's see if anything. All right, sweet. So now we're getting some crazy info over here. All right, uh, so this is like a lot to actually to look at. So the most important thing would be, um, where is it, message. Right, so we're gonna care about a message probably. So we can use um, the JavaScript syntax that's like the newer version of uh, ES6, uh, I believe, or eight. So that just gonna de deconstruct these uh, object so I want I only want to you know get the message property out of it. So I can just say, hey, I only I only care about a message property, and then I can just say uh, message. So that would be equivalent to this thing over here. And then I want maybe the user. So the user is my user ID in Slack. So you can do like message like user and say if this user is. Um, is Kali or is it somebody else or is it like a Slack bot? that you don't want to you know, fire events based on different bots, then you can do that as well. So yeah, in this case, I think we're not really going to care about any of those. So maybe we can just like uh, send a response to whoever that is, right? So we can just get that message.user, which will be their user ID. And then we're going to use the uh, string interpolation technique in JavaScript. So a backtick meaning I want to use string interpolation so I can say, you know, for example, uh, in Slack, if you do this syntax and then passing in whatever that user ID is, and then what that is going to do is, you know, mention that user. So we're just going to copy that uh, message that user over here. All right. Uh, and then we're going to say, um, actually, we're just going to call an API based on this, so I'm gonna uh, comment this uh, for now. So for our API to work, we're gonna fetch. So the API URL that I um, defined earlier, let's take a look. So that's called API base URL. So uh, yeah, so if you wanna use other APIs like weather or whatever that is, uh, so like there's a ton of different you know, APIs out there that you can use, but this one is for free. And then what it does is it just gets a bunch of, you know, cat, Im uh, cat images from the internet. So maybe we can give that a try. And then 
we can just say uh, let's keep our uh, just make a new variable here uh, API URL and then that'll be process dot env dot this thing all right um, because it's TypeScript uh, this will be string or undefined so I'm gonna tell it hey if it's undefined then I'm gonna give it a you know default string so it's always a string right okay so right now I'm just gonna call um, API URL and then slash images slash search all right um, and then await so I'm gonna wait for that uh, fetch so it's basically like a get request to that API endpoint and then once that is done so we can just say hey I want to get back the result and I think here is actually a JSON uh, out of the API so we can use JSON and then use another way yeah don't worry about this this is like a fetch API thing um, yeah so we can just now console.info out the result all right uh, let's take a look at the console all right it's running so I'm gonna say cat again to trigger this function and then now it's gonna call that API and then give the JSON back and then you know just console out the result hopefully that's and that's a 404 interesting images search so let's try hitting that endpoint in the oh you know what that is I've actually gone ahead and added the slash at the end so yeah let's get rid of that slash and save and if somebody wants to uh, do that cat emoji thing sweet <laughs> thank you all right uh, so now we're getting a list of different uh, objects over so each object has at least one URL so we're gonna try to see if that's a link right uh, so that's a cat uh, image right there uh, so yeah we've successfully gone ahead and called the API correctly and then we can just you know send this image back to slack and let it post it here all right um, so result is gonna be a list right and then each list has an URL so we're gonna rename this uh, variable to um, images okay and then we're gonna do an if check here if image images are defined and images dot length it's actually bigger than zero or like if it's not defined or uh, and if the length is zero then we're not gonna do anything all right so that's basically preventing uh, our app to crash basically so we're gonna only care about the first uh, URL here so we can just you know grab the first image like this and then we can use the deconstruction here as well so I'm just gonna say hey I want to grab the URL out of it and yeah that's basically it and we can just say hey slack I want to send back uh, a message containing the thing that I want to say so say is a function that slack is passing over for us to call so we can just return well not return so we can await the say function and then so the text is going to be um, mentioning that user right so we're going to take this over and then we're going to need a bunch of blocks so what blocks are basically there are like you know other than just rich text messages we can add different images we can add buttons we can add all different kinds of things you know to make it look fancy uh, to, uh, in a result that you can actually see a lot of the bot banks messages are actually utilizing a different blocks uh, that I built so if you want to you know look at how those blocks are built you can take a look uh, I think over at documentation and then there's a block hit over here and then 
there should be a black heap builder yes all right so we want to give that a look sweet so now we can just basically interact with this builder and then copy over any you know pre-formatted layout that we want so i'm just going to get rid of uh, all of this and maybe we only care about just sending one image so maybe a divider is good right uh, so we can add an image down here so it's not a drag and uh, drop kind of thing so we can just click all right so that's uh, append it to the bottom sweet all right so we can copy all of this over and let's fix this problem all right and then anything that we want to change from the uh, example here maybe the text we don't really care about that or you know just a random cat image and then this is another example image, uh, random cat image. Yeah, so right now we only care about the actual URL, right? So we're grabbing that from our API response, which is named URL at this point. So we can just pass that over and save it. All right, so now it's running on 3000. So let's try that again. <laughs> Sweet. All right. Uh, cat. And we're getting a problem. Missing scope. Ah, right. So Slack has a different uh, permission for that. Okay, so let's fix that one. Going back to our Slack bot. And then all auth and permission. And then, yeah, we're going to need chat right i think that's the one yes yeah so this one you know allows you to actually send messages from your bot and i think that's pretty much what's gonna fix our problem allow and then we can try that again all right <laughs> yeah it's working cool um yeah so that's so this is from you uh, earlier right API. yeah i think so this was from earlier that we fixed the problem all right yeah so let's give this every uh you know just give every step a uh, overview basically so the first thing we did was getting an api url and then we're listening to you know a cat emoji message um, using the regular extension uh, expression and then we're calling this API uh, and then grabbing that JSON result and then we're just getting that URL out of it and then say hey whoever initiated this uh, message I want to mention you first and somehow it's not showing up I think because if you pass blocks over um, it's actually ignoring all of the text above yeah, so that might be a problem. So we can just uh, give an empty text, which is ironic because they always require you to send a text over. Um, so we can basically have the first one, uh, what, what type it is, I'm not sure. So let's get back to the block hit. Um, so um, context, no. Um, Interesting. Maybe just a message or text. Is that a thing? Oh, header section. Oh, okay. So I see. So Slack only allows section to be passed in. So we're gonna drag that one up. Come on. All right, and this will be a markdown, right? So we only care about this right here.
All right, section markdown. All right, so we're going to pass the, oops. All right, so we're going to paste what we had earlier, uh, basically just mentioning a user, and then maybe say like a friendly message. Uh, here's your image, uh, like that. All right, so let's make sure our app is still running. It is. Cool. And then we're just going to say cat again. All right, Kelly, here's your image and random cat image. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, so now if you just. <laughs> yeah, so now if we want to add like a dog image, then we can just go back uh, in the environment variable here, maybe say like a dog API uh, base URL. And then uncomment that. And let's get back to our TypeScript. So maybe this one would be called um, dog API URL. So process dot env dot um, dog. Copy that over. All right. So what we're gonna do is basically just copy everything over to a dog API version. All right. So. Let's make sure we're using the correct API doc API URL and random cat image, random dog image. All right, so save that and we should be ready to go for listening a dog emoji. And hopefully that's still set up correctly. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet, two, two cats. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, you know what? We have to restart the app because we added a new environment variable that wasn't uh, previously when we run uh, the, uh, the app. So we have to say npm run dev again. All right, so now it should work. Thank you. And nothing's being triggered. Sweet. Talk API image search. Oh. Invalid blocks. Huh, I think it's probably because the URL is broken or something. Yeah, we're gonna console dot info that URL. And then comment this whole thing. All right, so if you say doc, you should be able to get a URL. Oh, it's a GIF, even better. Huh. Well, I guess the doc API is down. So yeah, that's, that's not our problem. <laughs> Yeah, let's not do dogs for this tutorial then. Oh, that's weird. It definitely took a while to load. Um, but yeah, the cat one seems more consistent. Yeah, definitely. Sweet. Uh, is there, I think um, this should be like a starting point for you to build your own Slack bot at least. Um, is there anything that we want to take a look at? Uh, if anybody has any suggestions or... Right, that's a good question. Um, so yeah, I have a, you know, a, a virtual a server running on constantly. Um, so you can definitely have one. I think Amazon EC uh, service has one, like a free tier. So you can just run that, you know, twenty four seven, and then for that to work. Uh, so that's basically like a node um, thing. So in a node world, we have this thing called PM two. So you can just say start. And then that's going to be like always in the background in a thread listening. So yeah, that's just going to be 
24/7 listening for you know events happening to this port right here, and then you can just pipe through you know events to that URL if you have like a custom domain or something to set up. So yeah, that's how I've been setting up the Bob Bank and Emoji Dex in a different server, and yeah, all that fun stuff with the server uh, took me a bit of time to set everything up with like pushing up code to GitHub and then syncing them over and then rerunning the code and then yeah just a whole bunch of different DevOps stuff in there as well so yeah if anybody is interested I can yeah help you through that process as well yeah so recently I've added um, TensorFlow models uh, to our emoji deck which was fun uh, it took me a whole Saturday to figure out um, but yeah, basically, so right now, if you post images in a channel that Emojidex is in, so maybe you have seen like in our channel or Doc's channel, uh, so Emojidex will automatically spam those emojis. Uh, that was my bad previously because like I've set up a different structure of arrays that's like randomly being selected. If it's a dog, then I'm gonna select you know either Dexter, Jade, or just a whole bunch of different dog emojis in there. But yeah, uh, the process of setting that up is actually pretty simple once you've got through the process of you know, uh, setting up things in no environment. So basically that's just like importing a different uh, TensorFlow uh, models and then just say, hey, I wanna classify that image and then give me the result back. And then you can you know, listen for the results and the confidence of it is if it's like, you know, higher than 60%, then we're gonna post a reaction to it. If it's not, then probably it, it has a problem with, you know, understanding and recognizing that image. But yeah, that's kind of the flow that I did with the emoji decks and how to expand over time. But yeah, I don't think we have enough time to actually demo the ML part of it in this demo. But yeah, if, if there's any th other thing that people are interested in. Uh, so maybe another thing we can show is perhaps like a app home. So that could be something. Uh, so yeah, if we go back to the Blockhead Builder, there's actually a home preview. Um, and you can select the template. There's a bunch of them. So the first one is kind of like how Google Calendar has it right now, or this one actually. Yeah, so you can do a basically like a whole bunch of different crazy buttons, modals, and drop downs, and crazy stuff, and time uh, selectors. But yeah, I haven't found like, like very useful examples to add to Bot Bank, so I, I haven't really gone overboard with, you know, with the whole app home thing. But yeah, what I've set up is basically just like a list of info that I want to return to the user so the user doesn't really have to call like my or balance comments every time because that could get very uh frustrating for you to type and then constantly back and forth and yeah so that's something that i added so basically if you want to do that as well we're gonna um, add a different event so that's called app home open scroll down yeah, app home open. All right, so save the changes. All right, um, so for that one to work, I think that'll be just a, a standard event listener. So right here, we're just gonna say, hey, I wanna listen for app home opened. And then the second argument would be how you wanna handle it. And then yeah, it's a little bit different than what we had earlier. So earlier we had, it's basically like responding to the channel, you know, just giving uh, a new message basically. But right now we're not really sending a message. So what we're gonna do is actually, uh, if I remember correctly, that should be uh, app.client. So we're actually making a web call to update the views of that app home. So. We're gonna say app.client. So what client is, is just a web uh, API client that's being wrapped by uh, Slack that you can just make, you know, a 
Dart instead of making the actual API calls like this. So yeah, it's a bit more elegant, I think. Um, so you can just say app client views and then publish or update. Can't remember one. Uh, which one? I think it's update. And then so you're gonna at least need a uh, user. Oh wait, uh, I'm gonna take a peek. It's been a while since I use uh, VS Code. I'm not gonna dive into that one. Use update. How do I get to that one? Well, never mind. So we can go back to the documentation, try to find out ourselves. App home open. Publishing and updating your apps home tab. Yeah. Um, publishing, updating. Right. So this is the payload that we're going to send back to Slack to rebuild the home tab, basically. Okay, so user ID is what we want to pass in this case. And, hmm. So this is publish. Okay. Not update. All right. So user ID. Yeah, we have the user ID. So in this case, I think there's a event that we can grab. And then in event, there should be a user in there. All right, so we're just going to grab that user out. And then the user will be this user. And then the views or view will be a bunch of blocks, I think. Oh, type home. All right, type home. And yeah, there's a modal as well, if you want to do modal. Uh, and there's blocks. Yeah, so that'll be just a block that we can basically copy over from here. Let's try that one. But for that to work, we need to make another API call here. So let's copy that over first. All right, uh, so we don't need this section right here. Or maybe to say here's your image. We don't need to ma mention the user again. Um, yeah, so there's two arrays. We don't want that. And let it fix itself. All right. Um, right, so we don't have the URL in this event. So we're going to grab that. So yeah, now it seems like we can make a function out of it. So yeah, just grab uh, image whatever that'll be a sync uh, give me the URL or actually we don't need a URL so we can just copy this whole thing over and then return image URL and here we'll be returning no all right so that's a little bit refactor that we did there all right so just grab image and then that'll be the url right there so if url is no then goodbye all right so we can just grab this url and send that url over here all right that's the same name and i think we're all Done. Yeah, let's. How do I re? Oh, here it is. All right. Uh, so yeah. So once the app home is opened by the user, we're gonna grab the image, and then we're gonna grab the user ID, and then we're gonna say, hey, I wanna publish the view of home for this user, and then that'll be a bunch of blocks that we've previously built for the exact same format. Yeah, and then one last thing before I forget is we have to wait. Well, actually, yeah. If you want to do other stuff like 
down here and say, um, so if you want to, uh, you know, send a message to yourself, say, hey, this user has opened the home tab for your bot. You can do that for some reason. Uh, so you can just say like away app. So basically what away does here is, uh, you know, once this has finished, I want to do this right here. So if you don't add a wait, they are going to, you know, run synchronously. So that'll be just like at the same time. But yeah, um, so we can just say app.client.chat.post message to whoever that you're, uh, you're going to send a message to. So the user, actually the channel will be the user ID. Um, maybe you want to send that over to yourself. So I can actually uh, grab my, where is it, profile user ID, copy that over and say what exactly, that will be your choice. Let's just say this user, that will be user, right? So this user has opened your apps home. All right, so let's save that. Wait, did we start uh, the app at all? All right, so now it's running on 3000 and make sure everything is correctly here. All right, seems like it. And what we've added is the app home. So if we go back to find this bot and then go to app, Oh, one thing is you have to tell Slack that where is it? Your apps. You have to you have to tell Slack explicitly that you want uh, App Home. So you want App Home to be a feature available right here. So in Show Tabs, there's a Home Tab toggle. So we definitely want to trigger this one and. There a save button. It's not sure. Oh, there it is. And it's loading. Sweet. Not off. Hmm. Oh, right. Yeah, Slack needs to get that uh, token. So we have context over here. So we can just say context.bot token. So that'll be passed over. Gonna need this one as well. Restart and re trigger the home tab. All right, there it is. And it actually triggered two times that you can see. And then it sent me two messages, right? Uh, so if I right now try to go back to message tab, it's going to send me another one because for some reason, Slack uh, thinks that leaving this home tab will be counting as app home open uh, as well. I'm not sure why, but yeah. So right now I have three messages, right? So Caddy has opened your app's home tab. So if anybody else tries uh, right now tries to open the tab, I should be able to you know receive that message saying somebody else has opened the app's home tab. All right. Yeah, I think that should cover our first uh, Slack bot tutorial right here. If people have any um, questions, yeah, it might be helpful to check what people has have been saying over here. Oh yeah, EC2, I'm not sure if it's like always on. It could be. All right, yeah. Uh, I hope people have found this tutorial to be helpful uh, for you to get started with your own Slack bot. And yeah, I think we can 
uh, stop the.